What's up everyone? Welcome back to Just Finish Coding. In this series, I'm going to teach you how you can simulate the night tour problem, which is one of the most beautiful problems that was ever composed in chess. Let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now here's the preview of what your finished program is going to look like. When you hit the green flag, you can choose the starting square for your knight. And once you do, you can move the knight around the board. And the goal of the problem is to try and reach as many of the 64 squares as possible without returning to an already visited square. So for example, I can't go back to any of these green squares and I can only move on to the squares which do not have a number and the green uh, square written on them. So uh, the goal is to go to as many squares as possible and not get stuck anywhere. So for example, if I do get stuck like this, then the game is pretty much over. And that is what you will be learning to make in this series. So without further ado, let's get right into our code. Once you've set up your editor, the first thing I'm gonna do is to delete the cat sprite and uh, make a new one. And this is going to be our initializer sprite. So this is going to control everything that's done before like the user begins playing the game. So once you've renamed that, now you can get into a bit of the initial code. So when the green flag is clicked, and uh, keep in mind, this is going to be our only, maybe there'll be one more, but those two will be our only when green flag is clicked blocks, and all of the other blocks will be based on a message start. Because uh, for example, if we just do this, for example, let's just say message one, and uh, now when we have the code starting when we receive message one, this makes so much more sense because if we want to restart the game, we can just broadcast message one. Now we may not do that for the night tour because it's just so much easier to click the green flag in this case. But if you're making a more complicated game, then um, you know, in the end of the game, they'd have a restart level or something like that. So that would be a very useful thing to have. So the advantage of using this is you could just broadcast uh, message at the end and this is going to start the code all over again but if you have just when green flag is clicked then you can't broadcast green flag is clicked and there you're at an inherent disadvantage so that is one thing you could do but anyway we're not going to do that for now so now i'm going to make a variable and this is going to be called prelim and you'll understand the use uh, usage of this only a little bit later on so i'm just going to click ok delete the my variable variable and then set prelim to be true at the beginning and uh, after you're done with this, I'm gonna set another variable. Okay, and uh, uh, this time I'm gonna make it for the sprite only, and this is gonna be called C, which is a counter. And now I'm gonna make another counter, which is D. And these two counters are going to uh, initialize our board coordinates list. And our board coordinates list is, you've got to imagine a chessboard right here. And uh, the top left of the chessboard, the coordinate of that is going to be one comma one. The next one to its right is going to be 1 comma 2 and uh, below the first one that's uh, below 1 comma 1 is going to be 2 comma 1. So that's going to be our overall chessboard layout and we're going to have each and every one of those 60 squ uh, 64 squares defined with a coordinate and the list that's going to hold all those coordinates is going to be our board coordinates list. So for in initializing our list, uh, things are pretty simple if you understand nested for loops. So first I'll have the repeat untils. And uh, right at the top of it, I'm going to set C to be 1. And uh, you can actually have a repeat 8 uh, since uh, we're not going to have a condition, clearly speaking. We just need to repeat 8 different times. So this, this is going to make our life a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm just going to say repeat 8. And uh, within that, I'm going to have set D to be 1. And uh, once you've set these two um, variables to be their values, now you can say uh, you repeat 8. And uh, right after that, you change D by one. So change D by one. And uh, outside your loop, outside your inner loop, I mean, you can say change C by one. Now, the main part of, uh, of this whole loop is going to be inside. So I'm gonna make a list and uh, I click make a block accidentally, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna make a list. And this list is going to be called board coordinates. And like I mentioned earlier, it's gonna hold all the coordinates of the board. So within this list, uh, obviously we have to delete everything at the beginning, so I'll do that right now. And obviously inside this list, we need to add stuff. So what I'm gonna do is say add thing to board coordinates. And uh, instead of thing, what I'm gonna do is to say join 
and uh, I'm going to have another join inside that join and in the middle of the two, um, two edges I'm going to put in a comma and uh, now I'm going to head over to variables put in the C variable on the first join and the D variable on the second join and I'm going to add these two this join um, C comma D in two board coordinates okay and now when I hit the green flag you can see that our list is pretty nicely set up and uh, we have everything from 1 comma 1 to 8 comma 8 with the length of 64 and even when we do it repeatedly um, nothing really changes because we've been deleting the board coordinates all the while perfect now we can hide these uh, variables um, all of them since we aren't really going to use them for now all right so now let's initialize our board list now compared to the board coordinates list um, things are pretty easy for the board list so I'm going to make a list and that's going to be called board now this list is always going to have a length of 64 squares and um, we aren't really going to be uh, changing or tweaking with that because uh, if we do that we'll get a whole bunch of errors the way I'm coding it so what I'm going to do is right at the beginning itself first I'm going to delete all of board but after that I'm just going to have 64 spaces inside the board list or actually rather than spaces I'll add in vacant or occupied depending on whether the knight has occupied that square or not so I'm going to um, have them uh, shortened as V and O so that's what I'm going to do so head over to control grab a repeat 64 this time and uh, all you're going to have is say add and you can find that in the variables category so add V to board and V means that that particular square is vacant so now each of these V's in the board correspond to their particular um, particular index value in board coordinates so the first value in board which has a V is going to correspond to the first value in board coordinates that's the general idea and this is pretty much all you have to do with the list and now when you hit the green flag and look at these two lists you can see everything set up properly so once you're done with that now we can initialize a few more variables so uh, I'm gonna grab a when green flag is clicked from events once again and uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm also going to zoom in a little bit so that you guys can see better because I think my code was way, way, way too small. All right, anyway, so when green flag is clicked, I'm going to make two more lists from the variables category. And uh, the first list is going to be called truly accessible squares. And uh, the second list is going to be called just accessible squares. So uh, make sure you set up those two lists to, for all sprites only. And uh, once you're done with that, now you can set um, basically delete all of those uh, values inside the list. So delete all of uh, accessible squares and delete all of truly accessible squares. Perfect. Now after this, I'm going to set up a bunch of variables. Okay. The first variable I'm going to set up is going to be called score added. And you probably don't know what this value is going to hold just as yet, uh, but uh, you'll understand this when time comes. So uh, this is going to be a Boolean value and set it for all sprites. And uh, this value is going to be set right at the beginning to be no. So I'm not going to set it to like true and false. I'm just going to set it to yes and no. All right. So once you set up score added, now you need to set up two more variables. One is going to be called start X and the other one is going to be called start Y. Now, both of these values are very, very, very important. So uh, make sure you set those up correctly at the beginning. So set up start Y. Uh, there we are. And uh, initially, I'm going to set start x to be negative 178. No, actually, 178, non negative, uh, just positive 178. And uh, start y at the beginning is going to be set up to negative 180. Now, you don't understand, uh, if you don't understand what these values hold, it's perfectly fine. Just copy me for, uh, for now. I'm going to set up another variable. And this is going to be something that you probably will recognize and that's going to be called score. So score is going to be how many squares we've completed so far and how many squares we've um, set from vacant to occupied if you want to think about it that way. And uh, that is going to be set not to zero at the beginning, but minus one. And the reason we're setting it to minus one is because at the beginning, if you remember our preview, we had uh, the user like click on the particular square where he wanted to move the knight to. And at that point in time, when the knight moves to that particular square, we're going to increment the score by one. So if we set it to zero at the beginning, then our score is going to be on one, positive one, without us even having moved a single step. And uh, if uh, I don't know, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but 
the starting square where you basically start off in your night tour problem does not add to the occupied squares. So that's another reason why we need to set score to be a uh, negative one. All right, anyway, now uh, if you've uh, set up all these variables, just have a message at the end of like add V to board. And uh, that message is going to be called start. So after uh, head over to events and uh, grab this block called broadcast message. And you can see I have this message set up. So in case you don't, just click on new message and then uh, type in start, okay? And that's pretty much it. That will be all for your initializer sprite. And now I'm gonna code a bit of the chessboard before winding up with this tutorial. So for your chessboard, things are gonna be pretty uh, pretty simple, okay, for this video. So within choose a sprite, click upload a sprite and then click the chessboard sprite. And in case you haven't downloaded the sprite just as yet, all the links to the sprites and uh, the images that I will be using will be linked in the description below. So you can head over to the Google Drive attachment and download all the necessary sprites. So once you have the chessboard set up, when the green flag is clicked, what I'm gonna do is to go to, I'm gonna hard code the value in, and this value is going to be x0 and y is negative two. And I'm not gonna have these values to be functions of start x and start y, Although I could, I just think hard coding, it makes it a lot easier. All right, once you're done with that, now you wanna add an extension. And the extension is going to be a pen uh, extension. And at the beginning, we're gonna erase all because we're gonna stamp a lot of sprites, including our chessboard. So after you erase all, what we need to do is to say, go to back layer. Since our chessboard's gonna be all the way behind the other sprites. So uh, go to, grab that front layer and change it to be back layer. Now before I move on, I'm gonna head over to the initializer sprite and uh, hide all the variables except for score. And now I'm gonna head back. All right, so once we go to the back layer, what I'm gonna do is to stamp it in. And what stamping will do is to leave an imprint on the background. So after I'm stamping, uh, after I'm done stamping it, I'm just gonna hide because our, um, you know, clicking is going to be um, done within our, uh, within I believe our, um, our, our stage itself. So uh, make sure you just add a show at the beginning. That's pretty much it. Once you have this, uh, you can now head over to the stage and we're gonna have a couple of lines of code right there as well. So within your stage icon, now uh, this is going to be pretty much like the message when the stage is clicked. So uh, we're, not gonna uh, we're not gonna have a when green flag is clicked or something. I'm just gonna grab a when stage is clicked. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is to make two more variables for all sprites once again. And this is going to be called mouse X and mouse Y. And these are gonna uh, store in the instantaneous coordinates when the user clicks the stage. So I'm gonna set mouse X to be uh, the mouse X position and mouse Y to be the mouse X position, or uh, mouse Y position. And uh, you can find those two value, uh, values in the sensing tab. All right, perfect. Now, once you're done with this, I'm gonna broadcast a message and uh, that message is going to be responsible for finding the particular X and Y coordinates where the user has clicked on. And I don't mean mouse X comma mouse Y. What I mean is that if the user, for example, uh, I'm gonna switch to full screen, uh, clicks on, let's just say this square, okay, right at the bottom, that particular function, uh, because we broadcasted that message, which we will code later on, will return eight comma one. Okay, that's our uh, preferred output. So uh, once you're done with that, head back to stage and uh, just say broadcast, new message, and this is going to be find x comma y. Pretty much it. Click okay, and uh, you should have this if you did everything correctly. And uh, that's it we'll be coding in this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like, and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.